And then you said that you are entitled to a jury trial on the issuance of a child support order. And no, you're not. You're not. So you guys are allowed to go against Supreme Court law? Is that it? Because it, it's on an amiscon. You can't have something without due process in a jury trial. Um, so, no, none of that's true. Really? Because I just beat a case and had two cases nollied and dismissed under judicial clause. Like, what okay. jurisdiction? So, child you know, uh, to the Christian nations? It says other foreign Christian nations. Other foreign Christian nations. What is a Christian nation? What is a Christian nation? Well, that I would not know because I am a Moorish American. I'm more into being related to Moorish American ideology. In today's compilation, we're kicking off with an intense showdown presided over by Judge Anzalone, featuring what we suspect to be a sovsit husband, David Shroud. He's caught in the middle of a heated family court dispute with his estranged wife. The issue? Child support payments from their divorce settlement. At first, David nearly blended in as an upstanding, God-fearing, law-abiding citizen who has trust in our judicial system. He almost flew under our radar completely, but he slipped up and mentioned one particular phrase that showed his slimy little sovereign hand. And for us, it was a telltale sign. If you can spot it, leave a comment down below and let us know that you caught it too. Then we move to the second case, featuring a self-proclaimed, more rich American defendant named Brian Raleigh, who took the term talking in circles to new heights with his endless word salad spiel. Lucky for him, he has the world's most patient judge. He's defending himself pro se against his landlord, who's claiming he owes over $2,000 in back rent. But will this soft sit have to finally pay the piper today? Stay tuned to find out. This is in the matter of David Shorts versus Jessica Sue Shorts, file number 2020-47465DM. I have Jenny R. Stone, P77883, appearing on behalf of the defendant. All parties are appearing via Zoom. We are here today on plaintiff's objection to the referee's recommendation and order. Both parties petition for a referee hearing regarding the issues of child support and parenting time. The referee determined there was no reason to modify the parenting time schedule. The referee did determine that it was appropriate to change some parenting time conditions, adding a licensed driver whom the children are familiar with must transport the children. Parenting time exchanges will continue to take place in Albion. Neither parent will record parenting time exchanges. Neither parent will disparage the other parent or anyone in the parent's household in front of the children. Neither party will discuss enrolling the minor children in extracurriculars um, with the children without first discussing with the other parent. Neither parent will schedule summer activities outside of their own parenting time without the consent of the other parent. And the Parent will forfeit a parenting time phone call made later than 515. They also entered a uniform child support order. Mr. Shorts, you objected to everything as you essentially alleged that defendant mother is alienating the minor children and you're indigent so you can't afford support. You did provide, thank you, a very thorough brief. Um, some of the things I wanted to talk to you about is... Um, What is, um, let me look at your judgment support. You, your Honor, may I add one thing real quick? Yeah. So um, we did file an objection as well. I called and I got a court date of August 19th, 2024 at 9 a.m. We mailed it in on the 26th and I served a copy to Mr. Schwartz. In the meantime, he must have gone to the clerk's office, filed an objection, and he got this date. So it's my understanding we should have, we have two different dates for objections, but both plaintiff and the defendant have filed an objection. Yeah, I know that. I was just going through his. Oh, okay. All right. I just yeah, want to I make sure that you, we have the different you dates. You have an objection that she wants to be able to enroll the children in extracurriculars during the school year. That's your objection, yes, sir. right? Yes. Yep. Just clarification. And, yep. I just hadn't gotten there yet. All right. So, thank you. Sorry. That's Okay. 
Uh, let's see. So, Mr. Shorts, I was looking back at the judgment. Let me see here. Oh, this is a second file. So, Mr. Shorts, are you saying that there's a clause in your judgment of divorce that the parties be required to leave 50% of their estate to the children? Yes, there is a clause in our divorce that states that. And at the time I was, you know, I didn't have any future plans of meeting anybody else or moving forward. Uh, and now that that has happened, um, because I am still young, I do have a daughter, um, biological daughter that I have to include in that stuff. And it just doesn't work. You know, that. Okay. So, clause. Mr. Shorts, I can't go back and change a judgment of divorce. Okay. I mean, once the judgment of divorce is entered, it's entered and that's it. Okay. So then I'll just leave everything in my fiance's, my future wife's name, and I'll put it in a living trust to where nobody can touch it. That's fine. Because no courts can go. So, and then you said that you are entitled to a jury trial and the issuance of a child support order. And no, you're not. You're not. So you guys are allowed to go against Supreme Court law? Is that it? Because it, it's under a mis... You can't have something without due process in a jury trial. Um, so, no. None of that's true. Really? Because I just beat a case and had two cases nollied and dismissed under judicial clause. It never happened. It's false. It never happened. It's a fake. It's fiction. It's an urban legend that never happened. Like... What okay. So child support is entered. You had due process. You had hearings. It was entered. You provided your financial information. Um, if you're indigent and not working and you can't afford your child support, the resolution of that is to get a job. So um, I, no. have, I am working. But the thing is, is you as a court do nothing for me. You as a court have failed me miserably. You have a court also told me that the Michigan Child Custody Act is a private act. It's not, because if it was a private act, it wouldn't be on your website through Lenoy County as a handbook. It wouldn't be across the state and every other county as a handbook. You as Lenoy County fail people miserably and okay. don't protect well, others. well, none of that, none of that really applies, so thank you. And then, okay, then let's, um, take it to a, let's push it to a Supreme Court matter, Your Honor, because you so do not you can do that. You do have the right to appeal this to the Court of Appeals, and um, you have every right okay, to do that. This, but this, this whole case dismissed under judicial bias because you used to be my court appointed attorney back when I was seventeen. And I don't feel I have a fair trial through this court. And I so, want Mr. Shorts, I represented more than 10 people a week for a period of 10 years. I may have yep, represented and, you. And I don't and, remember you. It wasn't it on this matter. case. And so there's it a five-year period that has passed. So, Mr. Shorts, that is, I'm not going to recuse myself because I represented you so many years ago on a completely different case. So no. I feel that I'm not getting a fair trial because of it, so I'll turn it into the JTC. This isn't a trial. This is an objection hearing. And I would grant your request if it was something I was able to grant you relief on, but these are things you, I can't you grant are. you relief on. You um, are allowed. I have to it's, follow the like law. Okay. Well, so do I because I've been seeking help because I can't afford it. So, yes, I do go to other lawyers and seek help. And Excellent. Also, yeah. So, when you can hire that attorney to do an appeal if you'd like. But so, just to make a thorough record, um, I can't go back and change a judgment and divorce based on the reasons you said. Um, I cannot give you a jury trial on child support. And yes, you the referee have does have. No. And the referee yeah. does have the right to issue a uniform child support order. If you wish to appeal that, feel free. So, Miss Stone, what you're saying is your appeal, your objection will be heard on the 19th of August. We were hoping that we would be able to address all matters today because it does um, deal with uh, uh, sports that start just prior to school. I object to that. Absolutely not. I had to wait for your guys's stuff that you ejected it is not okay for that matter so miss stone all right mr shorts miss stone we'll hear it on the 19th all right 
Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Mr. Shorts and Ms. Shorts, Ms. Stone. Okay, Thank wait you. a minute. Why am I being dismissed? You haven't even gone through my whole entire case, so you're just going to go ahead and dismiss it and not even go through the whole process. Those are your objections. That's all I received. Really? Because on the back of that, there's a quorum non judice, and you haven't even spoke about that. Um, a what? Quorum non judice. It's in the pack packet that you have. Here. Sovereign citizens tend to include impressive sounding phrases in their word, salad scripts like quorum non judice, which is a Latin legal term that means in the presence of a person, not a judge, or quite literally, before one, not a judge. In legal contexts, it refers to a situation where a court proceeding is conducted without proper jurisdiction. If a court acts in quorum non judice, it means the court does not have the legal authority to hear the case, so any decisions or actions made in such a case could be considered invalid or void. Sovereign citizens often claim a case is quorum non judice to infer that the court lacks jurisdiction. However, these claims are based on misunderstandings of how jurisdiction really works as modern courts have thoroughly defined procedures for establishing jurisdiction over a case. Um, a what? Quorum non judis. It's in the pack packet that you have, Your Honor, and you haven't even spoke on it. Any because judicial... it doesn't apply. Mr. Shorts, we're done for today. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Raleigh, uh, I'm here I... on the matter. I, I couldn't see you. Uh, Mr. Riley, thank you for, uh, that was going to be my suggestion to log out and log back in, but you did use thank the chat. I am here on that matter, my honor. I I am for the record, on the record, and uh, let the record show I am not a 13th Amendment uh, for, uh, free Negro slave, nor chattel, nor 14th Amendment United States corporate citizen. I am a national, I am a Moorish American, and I have standing as, as, uh, ancestral uh, Mr. Uh, Moroccan Empire, the adjoining islands by inheritance, but not by purchase, uh, Moorish pedigree, I am competent, I am Elodio and I'm liberated. I am all I am I that I am all rights preserved and retained to out prejudice or recourse. Certi certificate registration number AA seven seven eight six nine March twenty fifth eighteen forty eight AD corresponding to the Marsh calendar. 1368, copyright owner, CM Bays. Clock of Destiny, March 25th, 48 AD, MC 1368, uh, certificate registration number AA2 O nine. 316 March 31st 1952 AD MC 1, uh, 1327 Masonry plus art astro astrology history and geography clock of destiny 2 reused re edition of the previous Book of Clock of Destiny, Title 22, Chapter 2, Consul Courts General Information, and Certificate of re uh, certificate Registration Number AA2221441, September 8, 1952, AD, MC 1372, Clock of Dest Destiny, Moorish American, uh, uh, all of AL, all Moroccan nationality, nationality card or identification with Zodiac Constitution and certificate AA 22141 uh, is the focus of the determination uh, for the without a doubt affirming relationship of the relation 
relationship properly venue as law between the Moorish Franks and all, for, all foreign Christian nations. Title Eight, United States Code 1324, uh, federally protected Moors. What did they say about the Christian nations? What did you just say about um, this only applied to the Christian nations? It says other foreign Christian nations. Other foreign Christian nation. What is a Christian nation? What is a Christian nation? Well, that I would not know because I am a Moorish American. I'm more into being related to Moorish American ideology. So I was just trying to figure out. I was just, I was just listening. I was listening in. All right. Okay. Well, I have you checked in, Mr. Riley. Okay. And um, Mr. Dad, are you requesting legal counsel? Uh, no. Two three three four five five zero nine. This is Harriet Tubman Apartments versus Brian Riley and all occupants. Good afternoon, Your Honor. For the record, Rania Haddad, P H four nine two seven, on behalf of the plaintiff. And, and Mr. Riley, can you please just state your name? Prompt you. To. On mute. Okay. For the record, my name is Brian D. Riley. Hello. All right. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hmm. All right, have parties, have parties, were, were parties able to work out some type of resolution? Yes, Your Honor. Um, the parties have agreed to enter into a conditional dismissal with box 4B checked. Mr. Rayleigh's balance due and owing is $2,088.46. He will pay, his, he, he's going to pay $742 on the 5th of every month, beginning on 5-5. 2023. Um, that $742 includes his $542 of monthly rent per month, and then an additional $200 towards the balance. So he will pay on the 5th of every month, starting on May 5th, 2023, $742 until the balance reaches zero. Um, and then after the balance is zero, he will resume his regular monthly rent. And a regular monthly rent is five forty two, correct? Correct, Your Honor. So two hundred dollars extra. Is it two zero eight eight point four four? It is two zero eight eight point four six. Point four six. Okay. All right. And is four B checked? Yes, Your Honor. All right, uh, Mr. Riley, do you understand the terms of this agreement? Yes, I do. All right, if you make those payments, your matter will be dismissed in the event you don't, a judgment and a writ of eviction can be filed at the same time. All comments, viewpoints, interpretations, and insights expressed in this video are for education and entertainment purposes. All individuals featured in the video are to be presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Please do not attempt to contact, locate, or engage with any individuals featured in the video.